Okay, I decided to make a video on how to base time a carbureted engine or really any engine that has a distributor in it. I realize a lot of people don't even know what this means or don't know how to do it. Basically, base timing is how you figure out where your number one cylinder is in the firing order. This is, happens when, well, you can see here, like there's no spark plug wires on it. A lot of people just look up, you know, like on the internet, bring up a picture on Google Images or look in a service manual, and they're like, oh, well, this is number one cylinder because the book says so. Well, the problem is if the distributor has ever been out before, you can make any post on that distributor number one cylinder. It doesn't matter. The engine will run either way. It doesn't even run any different. As long as it still is timed properly, it doesn't matter where you put your number one cylinder. And it is true on Chevys from the factory, they should be basically number one cylinder should be pointing at cylinder number one. So it's normally at like the five o'clock position on the distributor. So I'm going to show you here, say you pull your wires off, don't know what to do, you put a new distributor in, or in this case a new motor, you got to get your timings set to start with. So that's what we'll go over now. So the first thing you have to do is figure out where your number one cylinder is. Now you can, at this point in life, you can just go on Google, Google your motor, get the firing orders that you're looking for, and see where number, number, or cylinder number one is. On some intake manifolds, it's marked. This one isn't but the one on the old motor is. So you'll see here, cylinder number one, the driver's side, front cylinder. On small block Chevys, it goes one, three, five, seven on the driver's side, two, four, six, eight on the passenger front to back. So like I said, pull the spark plug out of the number one cylinder on whatever motor it is you're working on. Next, you're gonna need a wrench. And you should pay some attention to your timing mark here. On a small block Chevy, your timing point is either going to be about 1 o'clock on the driver's side of the motor, or some of them are behind the water pump vertically. I think that runs from about 78 till the late 80s. So you have to turn the crank over, and normally I'd put my thumb over the spark plug hole, but I won't because I'm holding a camera, but you'll hear air push out when you're approaching top dead center on the number one cylinder. And I'll keep doing this until I can uh, hear the air come out or put my thumb over it. Okay, so as you're cranking the motor around with your finger over the spark plug hole, once you start feeling air push against it, you want to take a look at your timing pointer. And there'll be a zero degree mark on the pointer itself, and there'll be a line on your harmonic balancer. Uh, at this point, you want to get them both to line up. When those two marks line up and you verified air is coming out of the cylinder, that means that the motor is on the compression stroke and you've reached top dead center. At this point, you can time the rest of the motor. You can take a look at your distributor, and wherever the rotor is pointing is now going to be where your number one cylinder will be. So as you can see, it's pretty much pointing over towards, like, I don't know, driver's side of the car. Put the cap back on here. And now I can turn this, and this will be my number one cylinder. And from that point forward, you can put the rest of your spark plug wires on in order, and then set timing with a timing light, and your car will be timed. Okay, now if you base timed it right, the motor should start, at least with some finicking left and right of the distributor to get it to, you know, at least turn over to where it'll run. Uh, at this point, it's handy to have a distributor wrench, which is this. Uh, one side is 9 sixteenths, one side is half inch. Small block Chevys will usually use a 9 sixteenth. And this will get you to be able to go in here and tighten the bolt without some weird apparatus because it's about the only thing that can get in there. What I normally do is I snug it up to where I can just barely turn the distributor. Because if it's real loose, it'll just move on its own. Then you want to, once again, you know, note your timing marks down there, get familiar with them, like what the notches mean. This one's real nice and clean and new, and it has a nice red pointer on it, so you can see right where the timing's at. Then you want to hook up your timing gun. I have a fancier one than most. Digital readout and everything. Uh, your timing connector goes on your number one spark plug wire. And then, of course, to your battery. And what I can do with this timing light is I can actually set the advance and retard. So if I set this to 8 degrees... When I start it up, 
it will go right to zero on the balancer when it's at eight degrees. You won't have to try and figure out what the different notches are on it. And it depends what your timing mark is set up like, but normally there's a larger notch where it's zero or the, like the pointer is slightly different looking. And I said that's your zero timing pointer. So what we can do now is turn it on and I'll show you what the timing mark looks like. Okay, you want to wait till the engine is warm and at its lowest idle. You don't want to do it while the choke's on it's at high idle because your timing will actually go up as your RPM goes up due to the advance both mechanical and the vacuum. So as you can see, the timing lights now it's probing. This is every time your phone number one fires, the timing light fires. So I'm not sure if it's going to show up on camera, we can try. If I go down there, see if I can zoom in. That'd be pretty good. You'll see it, that red pointer is exactly lined up with that line on the harmonic balancer. That's because I have it set to 8. Right now the distributor is 8 degrees timing. Now what you can see happening is if I back off on it, I can make that mark move either way. When I put it down to zero, if you don't have an advanced timing light, like, that's what it looks like. That should line up with an eight degree mark on that timing pointer where that red mark is zero. And you see I put it back up to eight, it lines right back up. So pretty much you just turn your distributor left to right or clockwise and counterclockwise, depending on how your motor is, because it dances some on some way and you power it the other way, depends on what kind of motor you have. Until the timing is where you want it at. Most small block Chevys, I just put it 12, that's my own preference. I'm putting this motor at 8 because the guy's not, you know, racing it or anything as a cruiser. I don't want anything, you know, I don't want to knock or thing or anything. So there you go, that's how you uh, base time and there's a big mission timing on a small block Chevy or any other older V8.